Where are we going? To pick up a cauldron. A cauldron? Yes, a That's, big oh, cauldron, which is cauldron that we had on the farm that uh, my parents used to make apple butter. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, that's right. Community Church. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mom, there it is. Oh. We go to Living Hope. Oh, very good. I went to a presentation. What do you think? Oh, <laughs> it, look how big it is. Oh, my word. Mom, when was the last time you saw this cattle? Oh, I don't know. 1967? I don't think I really looked at it since the last time they made apple butter in it. So you made apple butter in this yes. kettle in the 1930s and 40s? Oh, my yeah. word. And there was a long handle that we had to turn like that. Wow. Oh, my gosh. This is how it looked. That is big. It took a lot of pails of apples to oh, fill yeah? that. That is really neat. And it's got the original mechanism in it, yeah. No. No? Oh, is that what your my, dad built? My dad bought this separately. Oh, okay. Because he knew it go, went with an apple butter, so he put it in there. Oh, he did. Okay. Yeah. So but that it wasn't original Okay. this one. But it has oh. the original handle on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know how black they got. So I think when he first bought it, I think he got it, like, polished somehow. Oh, is that right? Oh, like, they, if you look at one that's actively being in use... It just scores marks all the way. Oh, it's it's pretty shot. neat, isn't it, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> so. I remember it looking really nice and shiny. Mm. We are now at her house with the uh, copper kettle, which I bought back um, from a person who had bought it at a sale in 1967 when your parents had a an auction at their home, at their farmhouse. And this woman bought this copper kettle, and um, now the family has sold it back to me. This copper kettle was in your family, Mom, for um, at least two generations. Uh, your parents, uh, Clarence and Della Geisinger, um, used it on their farm. And Clarence's father and mother, John and Rebecca Geisinger, also used it on their farm. Uh, the kettle dates from the 1800s. We don't know where the Geisingers got it. It's possible that it was on the farm when John Geisinger's father, Abraham Geisinger, bought the farm. So it was uh, from Zionsville, Pennsylvania, and um, it was in a Mennonite community. So um, where exactly it came from, we don't know, but it was used very lovingly over many generations by Pennsylvania Dutch uh, Mennonite folks and families living in Zionsville. So the construction of this kettle is really interesting. This is actually a very large apple butter kettle. It measures two feet in diameter and it's 17 inches high. And it started out as a single sheet of copper and often the copper was imported from England. It was hammered into shape and the maker used dovetail joints that were soldered together. You can see the construction right there. And you can also see it uh, on the inside. You can see it down there. So mom, why? Why did they use copper? Why was, why was a copper kettle used rather than an iron kettle? It was because the copper caused the apples to keep uh, fresh, fresh taste, and it had the original uh, taste of the apples. Uh, the copper somehow preserved them, that, that, that would come out of the apple butter. Okay. And I also read that uh, it cooked more evenly when you were cooking with copper. Yes, that's true. Now, you you used this as a young girl on the farm in Zionsville, right? Yes. It was in the fall when the apples were really plentiful, and, and they often didn't know what to do with all of them. 
and uh, that's that was the time to make apple butter. So uh, they would use different varieties. Uh, sometimes they would put a lot of sweet apples in, and then you didn't need to add very much sugar. And but to have really good apple butter, you need a balance. So they knew what kind of apples would make good apple butter. Well, this made a lot of apple butter. <laughs> I mean, they used buckets and buckets of apples, and uh, they 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 were saw that they were clean, and then they would one by one uh, put the apples on the apple peeler, and then there was a cutting knife like that went all around the apple, and you had a real long. Uh, a, a fine line of, from the, the peel of the apple and it really did a good job uh, instead of having to cut it by hand. Of course you had to cut the apples in half and quarter it to get uh, spots that were remiss and, and uh, because apples can be very uneven and uh, you needed to co cut out the core and where the, the stem is. And it took a long time because it took a lot of basket of apples to fill this tub. And you need, had to fill it higher than this because you, they go together so much. Where did you get all these apples? Like, did your dad have an orchard? Well, we had a number of trees. Uh, on the farm, you know, along the uh, fence line, right, right. you know, different different fields, you know, plant the, the wheat or the oats or the corn or whatever. And th there would be tr apple trees going there. And did you help pick the apples, you and your no, siblings? No, 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 we, no. And where did, so you no. brought them into the house, and so this was a big deal. You were going to spend, this was apple butter making day. Oh, yes, home. and we would get tired of turning well, I'm sure paddle. you did, but we sure did. let's back up and talk about you. So your dad was in charge of this, right? Oh, yes, he knew and he learned it from his parents. And I'm sure my mother could have done the same thing. But my father knew exactly what he was doing. He knew how long to, to the route that he would get from the sassafras tree. Uh he once it, it was clean and he put it in the apple butter he knew how long to keep it in there i'm sure he kept tasting the apple butter a number of times to to make it just right so you would you would well he would fill up fill this up with apples right like yes, you he, would watch yes we did and this was cooked over an like a like a uh cast iron stove it was set um, one of the, one of the top lids was pulled up and this was actually set over an open fire, right? Yes. Uh, it was yes. a wood fire. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you had to keep putting the wood in all day long. It must have been smoky in there. No, I guess uh, you no, put a fireplace. No, the, the chimney took care of that. It wasn't, it wasn't really smoky. But it was hot and it was dangerous because this was a big uh, pot of boiling <laughs> apple butter, right? Yes, and you, you didn't want to get too close to this because it would bubble, and sometimes it would bubble and fly out and hit someone, and they'd get a burn, you know, right. a bad burn. So you so, had to be far away. There was, there was actually... Uh, this mechanism, as I said, wasn't original to uh, this particular pot, but there would have been a long pole or a handle attached to this that had some sort of a turn handle, a wooden turn handle on it. Yes, it, maybe like nine feet away. Oh, it was that far? Oh, yeah. It, yes, it was pretty far. Nine feet away, and, and we would turn this, and... and uh, that kept us away from the heat of the of the stove and, and this hot <laughs> hot apple butter in here. So this yeah, it was an all day affair. So you and your siblings took turns and your mother and your father, mm -hmm. you each maybe turned it for half an hour just to 
keep it from burning, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, that yeah, was you the couldn't gold. let it set and do something. You had to keep it continually moving. You didn't want to have a burnt taste in the apple butter. That would have spoiled the whole thing. That would have spoiled the whole batch. And when you went through all that trouble to make a whole batch like that. Well, what did you do um, with all that apple butter? Tell me what the next step. Okay, you're, you're turning the paddle all day long, and now it's finally gotten thick. Now you've got your wonderful apple butter. Your dad put, what did he put in it? Sassafras root? Did he yes, put anything yes, else in it? Yes, and you can still buy apple butter with sassafras in it. Uh, Bauman's apple butter making. Uh, they have, have, sell apple butter with it. And there are other places too, if anybody uh, wants to try it with uh, sassafras. But it gives it an extra extra flavor that that we grew up with and then the regular cinnamon maybe a little cloves and i, I don't know all the spices uh, that that was put in well show me those crocs that your mother used well crocs like this now these are very old crocs and we had some newer ones too and and they got filled up pretty far and then they got newspaper and they put newspaper over the top and it may be the paper went down to here they made made a round circle and and put it over the top and then they put like a string around it you know to protect it from dust and and all that um and then it was put up in the attic and where it was cold well it, except it yes. hot in the summer but yeah, it probably did but it, it didn't hurt it it didn't hurt it and then then they would bring down a crock and, and keep it in a cool place so you didn't keep this in your underground cave no oh my goodness no i don't think i uh, know i don't remember it being done it didn't yet. spoil up in the attic no. That's amazing. No, you can keep it for a long, long, long time. You can keep it for years if it's really cooked, cooked long enough, and and it's seasoned and everything. It won't spoil. Wow, that's. I don't amazing. remember ever having spoiled apple butter, ever. Huh? Why don't you pick that crock up? I just want to get. Let's take a closer look at that. That's really neat. This must have been made locally. What does it say on the bottom? It says Lloyd. It says Lloyd. Oh, your brother. Oh, so he had this for a while. Yeah, he had this. Let, me see, the, let me see the inside. Let me see the inside. Oh, that's really neat. That's beautiful. When we moved into our house up at Neffs, you know, that big farmhouse. Yeah. And two stairways. And right. When we moved up there, we found crocks of apple butter in the house. What? Yeah, we did. You didn't. Uh huh. And where were they? And I was a little afraid. Uh, I'm not sure if they were in the attic or the pump room. I don't remember anymore. And I was a little afraid to try it because I didn't know where. To, well, evidently it had to be from the Staley's, right. Nathaniel Staley, but. I think we were a little apprehensive to eat it because we, we, you know. You didn't know how old it was. Yeah, yeah. My parents said that didn't matter, though. Did you eat it? I think we did. Why don't you <laughs> ask that? <laughs> While you're still here, well, right. you're almost 93, and so <laughs> that old apple butter didn't kill you. <laughs> No, you can that's really it. that's that's really that's really funny. well it's so well preserved yeah well now how did you eat it at home did you eat it just like like a a teaspoonful at a time what you put it on oh you put it on a nice piece of fresh bread you butter it a little bit and then and then you put the Let's see, the cottage cheese. You have to eat. No, you don't have to. But <laughs> we did as a family just love putting cottage cheese on there and then putting apple butter over the top. 
that was just so amazing. And you know, the cottage cheese that was homemade, it had more of a tang to it. Not like the kind of cheese you get today in the grocery store. But that was so good. Eating a schmear case on... No, wait. <laughs> Let me... I was going to ask you, how do you say that in Dutch? Schmear case. Light varic. Light varic on schmear case. So is good as so. Ah, oh, that is good food. Well, let's take this wooden mechanism out and just look in the bottom of it again. Yeah, look at that. And you know, every every time they would make it, they were they were, they were kind of apprehension apprehensive to look at the bottom, hoping they wouldn't see a bad bird spot. And they were really divided delighted if there was just maybe just a little spots here and there but that wasn't bad so you don't that ever ever remember making a bad batch no i don't and when it was still when it was getting down to the bottom now i don't understand this but up around the top where the apple butter was like here it would turn green what it did it turned green now grace my sister said yes yeah, she remembered that happening but down here it didn't but we get a piece of bread and and rub it in the little bit of apple butter at the bottom and oh that was so good simply delicious <laughs> The lawn's pretty good. There's a piece really pulling on the floor. <laughs> I don't want to pull you down. Oh, I thought it scraped along. Oh, I guess it goes down and scrapes along the bottom. Didn't I thought it scraped along the bottom? No, this, the, I may made this contraption oh, right here. Oh, it's a wonder it's still. It's not, uh, not what was on the part. So this is my mother, Jean, on the left and my Aunt Grace on the right. And we are in Zionsville, Pennsylvania. It's Thanksgiving weekend. And right behind you is the farm where you were born, right? Yes. This is the land starting up here and it went all the way down into the woods. Look, you can see that it was made by a forge or something, that handle thing. Yeah. You mean the way it's... Yeah, the way it's bent around. Yeah, look at that. Mm -hmm. Look, just see that very unique and there is on the side of side of it somewhere along here is a can, stamp you can see name. a stamp but you can't oh. see it go we, can't, we can't read it but there is a name along there okay go ahead grace <laughs> look at that shit <laughs> it's a little heavier than it was 60 years ago <laughs> oh, i broke it and it's so beautiful here in this land that you grew up Oh yes, yeah. it was a wonderful life.
breaded chicken and brisket.